The virtual CISO moment is brought to you by VCISO Services, a leading provider of quality and experienced virtual chief information security officers for small and mid-sized businesses. Check them out at vcisoservices.com. Hi, I'm Greg Schaefer, and welcome to the Virtual CISO Moment. We are at Retreat, the Retreat Conference at Montreal College, and I'm here with John Sternstein. He is with Stern Security. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. So what is it that you do at Stern Security, and how did you get there in your cyber path? Sure. At Stern Security, we have a SaaS-based platform called Velocity that does internal and third-party risk. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a services side that does pen testing, virtual CISO, risk assessments, and all that. And how did I get there? I mean, how much time do you have? <laughs> I'll make a brief, brief, um, brief background. So, I mean, went to school, computer science. I started off with, you know, fixing computers, went into, first landed my first cybersecurity job with a... Um, financial institution and rose the ranks there, went from analyst to um, senior architect, and then from there I got a um, management job leading a security team at a large hospital, and once I got that infrastructure built and up and running, I really wanted to start my own company, and so transferred over to my own, my own company after that. Awesome, awesome. So not only are you, that you've gone through the ranks of cybersecurity in different fields, but you're also an entrepreneur. That's right. That's boy. There's a lot of stress involved in that as well, too. <laughs> I have a lot of gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. And that's all good. So you started out in financial services as, as you said, a cybersecurity analyst. That's correct. And that's actually a pretty impressive way to start out in the cyber field because, uh, if I remember correctly, financial institutions they are quite heavily regulated. That's absolutely right. So you know about the FFIAC, yep. you know about the either whatever regulatory body, NCUA, um, yep, FDIC, NC. and all that. That's right. Yeah. Um, were you ever, was your institution ever a member of the FSISAC at the time? I believe that, that happened, that started happening shortly afterwards. So I was the first cybersecurity engineer hired at that organization. Uh -huh. And so we, I got to see a, a infrastructure built from the ground up, which is great. So we started becoming members of all these groups midway through there. So you actually built security in as you were as as you were creating the whole infrastructure. Absolutely. So, so that was um, it was basically a dream job for me because I got sent to training constantly. I got to see everything from how do you start with the endpoint protection deployment all the way to how do you put in the firewalls, how do you put in the SIM, how do you align to a security framework, how do you talk to the organization about cybersecurity culture. I mean, we did that all. So. And, you know, that that last one can be so important because we, we talk so much about um, all of the technical skills that we need to know. Yep. But it's the soft skills sometimes that can be also very important, right? Yeah, the, you can't get anywhere without the soft skills. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to convince the organization to do what, what, what you know is right. And so um, you absolutely need the soft skills to do that. That's awesome. So tell me, tell me a little bit more about the uh, SaaS platform that your company is, is involved with. Sure. So, I mean, we, I've done risk assessments for, for so long and helping companies adhere to frameworks and then doing third-party risk manually for, for so long and um, realized we needed a way to add efficiency to this whole process. And so with the SaaS platform or internal risk, it helps you align to a cybersecurity framework. It shows your security journey over time and show how you, you um, progress through that and also helps um, evaluate all of your third parties, shows you which ones are risky to do business with, estimates breach costs for organizations. So I basically took everything that I did as a practitioner and working within these organizations and made sure that we built that into a platform that um, was really efficient to, to use. So this is a GRC platform? Sort I guess of? you could say GRC adjacent, yeah. Adjacent, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and, and you talked a little bit about uh, vendor risk in there as well. And yep. the cost of a breach. How, how would you determine the cost of a breach? Or an estimate it, I guess I could say. Yeah, so we do that based off of the industry they're in, the amount of data that they're dealing with, and then we also ask them certain questions about, you know, if they have security officer, do they have um, insurance? We ask them a series of questions that can um, uh, change the risk for, for that and reduce or increase the breach cost. 
And do you do you reference like previous breaches, like say the Verizon data breach report, to get an idea on, on like what the cost of a breach in an industry sometimes is? Yeah, we actually used um, for the baseline we used the Ponymon report. Okay. And then um, worked with mathematicians to help get smaller breaches and larger breaches to get those estimated, and so that's how we built that into the platform. And and the name of the platform is Velocity. Velocity, that's correct. Now I'm gonna take a guess here. Because, <laughs> because I'm going to guess that the the reason why you chose velocity is that that's a risk management term to determine whether or not the velocity of the risk is increasing or decreasing. Am I right or wrong? That it, you're right, but it started off just to speed through the process that was so manually intensive. <laughs> and <laughs> okay. so we we said velocity would be a great term, and then we said. Oh my goodness! This actually works well because this you exactly what you. I mean, that. I mean, as a, I, I, I love risk. Yeah. I mean, I, maybe I shouldn't say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I love, I love managing <laughs> risk. I, I think that uh, you know when I when I studied for the CISSP, um, in I think. I think I was certified in 07, so it's been, it's been what, 15 years? Mm -hmm. But when I studied, you know, I, I grew up in IT, if you will, in the networking side. So I'm okay. like, oh, you know, of all of those domains there, it's like networking is going to be my strongest one for sure. Yeah. No, it was actually risk. <laughs> and, and that helped me to understand a little bit more now about uh, where my career wanted to go. So, um, but I, I just, I love everything risk-related because ultimately the, the, the reason... The most important role, I think, of a CISO or a virtual CISO yep. is to communicate sufficient and necessary and complete information to the C-suite and the board of directors so that they can make risk-informed decisions. Absolutely. And if you have a tool like Velocity, for example, that can help distill that down, I assume that you, you have like a reporting feature in there, Correct. right? Correct. Yep. Reports, dashboards, all of that. Yeah, because people like colors. People you know, love they, 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 they the love the, They love the little heat maps. They love the little <laughs> circle things. I don't even know what they call those circle things, but, you know, like speedometer stuff or whatever. Yes, they love seeing that. So um, do, you, do you market to a certain vertical or a certain company size? I would say um, we tend to work with um, medium to large size organizations, but then we didn't want to leave out the small organizations, so we moved it to a freemium model. So any organization can measure their baseline security for free, and that was really for the smaller organizations oh, okay. to do that. So when I first started the company, I never wanted to make something that – we couldn't help anybody, you know, everybody out. And so um, that was really important to us to have a baseline security feature that anybody can use for free. And and how, how long has the company been, been in existence now? The CERN security has been around, this November is going to be eight years. And then the, the product has been around about two years. That's now. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. You know, I, I, and, and um, I do... Uh, virtual CISO consulting. I've been doing that for five years now. And I, I've always thought, they always say it's like if you can if you can make a small business work like, you know, after five years you've actually made it successful. That's, so, yep, that's what I've so always like, said. Five year mark. Yep, you're gonna yep. make it. So yay, I'm actually still here. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> um and it's and it's um the platform I, I'm assuming is SaaS based. It right? is SaaS based. It's a, sub a subscription model. Okay. Yeah. And um, what is what is the website for that? That is velocitysec.com. So now, so velocitysec.com. I got to remember to put that in the show notes in case yep. I don't. It's velocitysec.com. <laughs> it's spelled the way that it sounds. That's right. <laughs> so, Velocitysec.com. So here at the conference, um, you're also a speaker here, right? That's correct. And you just got done with a talk. Yep, it, I spoke on um, hacking silos and securing the planet. Hacking silos and securing the planet. That seems to me to speak towards like um, getting rid of like silos in business. Is that Absol about right? Absolutely. So one thing I've realized over the years, you've been in cybersecurity a long time too, um, is that so many of the cybersecurity problems that I see are because people aren't talking to each other. We put this device on connected to the internet. Nobody knew we connected it to the internet. There should have been more communication about this. Or maybe the development team is adding new features into an application. They're not working integrating the security team into the software development life cycle or maybe management teams not really communicating with the analysts so they're not understanding what's going on on the ground level so my talk was basically about how if we want to help out um, 
secure the environment and secure companies, we really need to do a better job of communicating amongst each other. So, and that, that stands for even vendors and customers, you know, executive analysts, you know. Even here, we're at a college, you know, we should be having students involved in um, more of our, our discussions too, because we're trying to fill up the, the gap of all the security jobs that are open out there too. Absolutely. And, and sometimes with small, particularly small and mid-sized businesses, but this is true actually I think for all businesses, actually maybe not particularly, you can get what they call SaaS sprawl. Yeah. Because you have too many, too many organizations that their business units are going out and they're actually finding their own, their yeah, own solution. And, and one of the truems, truems, I guess you could say the truths in information security, is that you can't protect what you don't know about. Absolutely. So you have all this sprawl all over the place and all these siloed so that you don't know about it. Yep. Um, that could be hugely, hugely risky that is and I like risk but I like managing <laughs> risk so yes reducing risk here. reducing <laughs> yes well, some risk is okay there's always risk of opportunity so that's true so for particularly since we we focus here mainly on small and mid-sized businesses yep. um, what would you think would be like one of the most significant threats today to small and mid-sized businesses as far as information security is concerned um, lots of threats. Some of the ones that we've seen uh, across the board are just a small to medium-sized businesses being hit by not only ransomware, but also recently there's been just so much fraud that, that we've seen. Yeah. So um, we've had several organizations within the last uh, couple months that reached out to us just because they had staff that were um, targeted with text messages that were pretending they're the CEO and just said, hey, I need you to buy all these gift cards for us and, and send that. So, I mean, there's not only... I think criminals are just trying to figure out different ways to extract money out of an organization. Ransomware is one direct way. You lock the files and ask for money. Right. Others just, you know, texting uh, individuals and telling them, hey, I'm the CEO, send me uh, gift cards. So they're just finding out ways. And it's obviously successful because they keep doing it. They keep doing yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, if, if, they, if they are successful, they're going to keep on, keep on doing it. Yeah. Well, that's a lot to do, and yeah. I always say that in cybersecurity, it's a stressful field in and of itself. But yep. here you are, you you built a business, you built a platform, you're going out speaking. It's stressful, I would yeah. imagine. It what do you, What's one of the things you do to decompress? Uh, I have uh, I decompress by playing guitar. So huh? I like I like playing guitar. Um, play a lot of that anytime I need to. Um, you know, relax a little bit. I play some guitar or you know, hang out with the family, my wife and you know, three kids. So run around with them and, you know, they have a way of um, making you ignore all the work that you just, <laughs> you were doing. So Did you bring your guitar with you? You could do a little song? Here? I would love to. <laughs> I, I didn't. That sounds great, though. <laughs> well, maybe, next time I'll be more prepared. Okay, that. well, maybe next year if you're speaking and we're back here at retreat, we'll do it. So. I would love to. We could we can make a little little jam over here. I, I used to play a little guitar. I used to write, uh, I used, I've done a little bit of songwriting. Um, I wasn't too good at it, so you know None I kept I kept are. my day well. None of us are. Like. <laughs> I can still do three chords. I there think you maybe go. four. Most songs are three chords. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And um, certainly, I think all country songs. So. Exactly. So, uh, future plans: grow the business, continue to, or are you going to like abandon it all and become a rock star? That sounds. <laughs> I think that was my plan a long time ago. Right. But <laughs> now, now the rock star is a side gig over over here. And so, I mean, plans definitely growing the business. You just see such a huge opportunity to help out as many organizations as possible. I mean, when I was working at, at the hospital years ago, you know, I really enjoyed um, working with the hospital. I said, you know, we have an opportunity. We can help out so many organizations. Yeah. So I want to grow, grow the business, um, grow the platform, grow the um, services side, and really help out as many organizations as, as possible. Well, awesome. John, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for stopping by and talking with us. Yeah, thank you for, for having me. It's a great story. <laughs> I love it. I want to hear a song one time, though. Next time, we are, we're going to have a song over here. Okay. <laughs> Everybody stay secure. <laughs>